In this episode, we prepare Maggie for spraying foam insulation. But before we could insulate, we needed to install the frame of the deck, the hatch, a skylight, and an air vent. The hatch was one of the more difficult things to fabricate, so we want to share a bit of that process. Eli purchased angle iron, then had it professionally fabricated into two square frames by his cousin Tony. The arc of the bottom frame was important in order to fit with the curve of the roof, while the second frame that was welded served as the frame for the polycarbonate. A hole was then cut into the bus, the frames were hinged together, and finally welded on by Eli's dad. After everything was installed, we painted the roof with a sealant. Okay, so today I got word that I have one week until spray foam insulation. There's a lot to do. It's fixing the rain. So we're gonna go in there, wait for the rain, see how well my, my windows are sealed. Let me give you a quick tour. What we got so far. We got the skylight in. So what I've been doing today is adding my side markers. Got a whole bunch of side markers I'm going to be putting on and wiring in there. We got a whole bunch of these amber lights, red lights, and clear lights. Let's we'll see what they look like. <clears throat> Now we got them across the top. We got them on the sides. Let me get this wiring finished and we're gonna get these walls, uh, these walls furred out with all this, this nice wood. And then it's spray foam. Got like five days. Today we are working on stripping off the, the bus, putting some strips of wood along the length. And then when we're done with that, we're going to be putting them long ways along the wall. This is so we have something to nail into, whatever the final product will be. But we bought these uh, one by threes, one by threes, one by twos, and that's what we planned on stripping everything off with. Um, you know, we have this curve that we have to fight. And I've seen a lot of people cutting each little piece to kind of like this. And it's not what I, it's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to have one whole piece going across, you know, so our plan was to trim it up like that, cut it halfway through, hope it would bend, but as you can see, they don't bend. So in order to save a little bit more money, we're going to return all these and we're going to use 3 8 plywood because the 3 8 plywood can bend a whole lot better and one 4x8 sheet we can do the whole bus with. So, we've been ripping, dad's been ripping oh, man. Each, each piece of board two inches but we'll be able to get the whole thing done with that sheet? Should be able I have been working on drilling holes to hide all this wire. This wire is for the side markers. This wire is for the tail lights, the turn signals, 
and the brake lights. You see that goes all the way down there. Splits up into two. And this is all the side marker lights. So all these wires, I guess you could say is part of the structure of the bus. It um, All my household wires, my receptacles, maybe the backup camera, everything else, I'm gonna run behind cabinets or behind. They're just gonna be hidden. They're not gonna be spray foamed in. But these wires, we're drilling through the rib and we're gonna put this wire through each rib. That way when they spray foam in, it'll be part of the bus. So that's what I've been doing on this side. As you can see, drill a hole. And this is a piece of PEX trimmed up into little runs that way the wire doesn't chafe because this wire will be through here as you see and I don't want any chafing so we just put that in there as a little little protector so we're doing it top and bottom see that that's pretty good morning it is September 2nd it is Labor Day so, Dad is helping me again on the bus. We got a lot done yesterday. Bus is still a mess. I got the wires ran for my side markers. Got them ran all the way down. Top and bottom. So, I was able to reuse all of this, all of this spare wire that I deleted from, from the switch over here. And the wire is 12 gauge. So whenever we're doing a, a split, going into these little connectors, there's really a whole lot of wire in a little connector. So I had to get the biggest butt connectors I could find, which happened to be 10 to 12, 10 to 12 gauge. They're nice and secure. It's very hard. So those wires aren't gonna jiggle loose and they're gonna be in spray foam. So they're really not gonna jiggle loose. Turned on all the lights last night. Lights light up on all sides. Nice and bright, looks like a big rig. While I was doing that, dead brand this wood in the middle right here and we're gonna finish this today we got this little curve we are a little worried that without this extra piece of support for the spray foam to grab that it would still be some noise so we're trying to eliminate all the noise and have a little extra support so this will just be another thing to nail into once we get all that done so today we will be finishing this put another flat piece like this on top of here so we'll have this ran all the way down come side and you know what I mean we're gonna box that in box that fan in and box the skylight in and then we'll recoup from there and see what else needs to be done before spray foam but we have gotten a lot done stay tuned we got a lot done the last couple days me dad and my brother show you what's going on in here we are all clean haven't seen the floor this clean in a long time um, we put in the center center support so all those cavities will be filled with spray foam hopefully that'll be nice and quiet I mean you hear how loud that is boxed in the humps as you can see these will be spray foamed in this is Jake this is my brother. He's got his beard in a in a in a bun. 
Um, Jake vacuumed out all these little cracks. It was full of old insulation. So that way when the guy comes with the, the nice fancy spray foam gun, it won't blow all kind of trash and insulation out into his face and piss him off. We got word today that the spray foam guy will be here on Friday. So he was supposed to be here in the morning, but he's having some some issues. So Friday is the date, which will give me some time to fill these holes in. I was thinking about using them for outlets or lights on the outside. I'll show you what it looks like on the outside. So this has all been reused instead of buying more metal. These was the, this was one sheet and this was the last sheet I could use that was, I guess, blemish free, but we still have these little blemishes. These were light holes. So like I said, I wanted to put an outlet that way I could have something to plug into the outside. We also framed in the Fantastics fan. That way the spray foam can go in the cavities. Yeah, you know why it's there. Boxed in this. And we boxed in the light up front. Jake covered this with tape. That way the spray foam doesn't come in through this side. Nice and sealed. So. That's what we got going on today. So today, it is Saturday. It's the 20th, I believe. It's the 21st. Um, excuse me not having a shirt. This is South Louisiana. And I'm already soaked in sweat. It is barely noon. Um, today, I'm covering in these holes. This is where my vent was massive hole this is where my stop sign was the screws i want to be closing these holes in and putting bondo over them as you can see this is kind of what it looks like I'm just going to tack a couple spots and then fill that in we did the same thing with these guys and this is also the same process I used with the flashers up top to make them nice and smooth um, I am reusing metal that came from the skin and I will be using a nibbler to cut it off Okay, so got the plate cut out. I bent it, kind of hammered it, just so it'll give that nice little bend. The way it'll fit over it nice and neatly. We're just gonna tack it up. Um, I got somebody on the inside and he's pretty much gonna put pressure on it coming out. That way uh, I can tack it up. Catching nothing on fire in there. Hello, all. Today is a beautiful, cloudless day, and I just want to show you the bondo work after the welding was done. Today, I will be sanding it down and I will bond to another layer, sand it down, and repeat the process until it's nice and smooth. Then we will spray paint it to seal it and it'll be good to go. So 
so I have been bonding and sanding down this this one mainly for like three days now. Eli is putting together the final probably the final couple of layers just so they're nice and pretty and I don't have to do too much sanding. These need one more final sanding, um, like a fine sanding before they're primed. All the others that you saw pretty much look like this one right here. Bono is a body filler. It needs a little bit of hardener to get going. You have to... Uh, get about three minutes. Yeah, you have only about three minutes before it gets to a point where you can't use it. It's like super tacky. The, the mixing part is like pretty important and both Eli and I when we were first learning kind of struggled with that with getting it to the right consistency the right way to where it's, it's easy to manipulate so since Eli is a little bit better at me than this we're gonna show you kind of how that works so that's an important step so he gets about a spoonful. About a spoonful. About a spoon, he's got like a legitimate Get household a spoon, spoon from your mama and them. <laughs> Go inside. Don't tell your mama. <laughs> yeah, don't tell your mama. Don't tell your mama. Just grab the grab the spoon. Hope she don't watch your YouTube videos. He does about like a spoonful and a half, a spoon, two spoonfuls, and you put hardener down the this down the whole lot. diameter of it. Um, this is a lot, as he just said. Of Bondo at one point you like don't need a lot usually with any job you're doing but, but this is a big old bus so we had four flashes in the front four flashes in the back so this is what we used this this process is what we used to fill them so if you're filling flashers get the gallon they sell many different sizes Many different little sizes. Okay, so he mixes it up, and pretty much as soon as it as it's mixed in like that, it's technically started. But you have to get it all evenly distributed. So he says it's important to lay it flat that first time, just like he did. Just the bubbles out. Get all them bubbles out. And then keep laying it as flat as you can whenever you mix it again. And just repeat that process of laying it out flat, spreading it all out to mix it. The the laying it flat is the important part. I was I was missing that mark. Just when I'm pressing down right here, I'm pressing down hard. Getting it as flat as I can. This is the final layer. I'm not gonna not gonna grab it anymore. It's good enough like this. I'm gonna start spreading it because I have less than three minutes now before it starts to harden. The less you play with it, the better. Get it on there. Press hard, get it smooth as you can. Stop messing with it. Get this final coat just in the middle right here because that's the thickest part. This is going to be probably one of the last layers. Hopefully the last layer. I'm going to put it on real thick. That way we could sand it down to probably like it. But it's about to start hardening up right here. So it's about to... About to be time to stop playing with it. As soon as you get that on here, you want to get all the the wet stuff you can off the mixing board. If you're using the Bondo pads. You let the dry on here and you just crack the pad. It's flexible. So when you bend it. When it's dry, it'll crack and you just peel it off. These are sold in replacement packs. And that's about it. Um, 
I'm gonna wait for this to dry and sand it again. I have finally finished with this big hole. We finished the can of Bondo. Uh, it's not perfect, but we're not going out and buying more Bondo just to fix the little imperfections. Don't forget to wear your respirator. <laughs> Right now, this is where the stop signs were. We have a stop sign hole in the front, stop sign hole in the back. Put a piece of metal just like the flashers, welded it right here. Now we're covering them up with Bondo. This has been four or five layers, and she's done quite a bit of layers. We've gone over with 80, 120. This is the final layer, so this we're going to be using a 220 grit after knocking it down with 120. This is a soft pad, so we're going to be taking, if you can see the grooves, we're taking all these grooves out and these transitions where it's paint to Bondo. All the transitions need to be smoothed out with 220. And then it's time to hit it with some primer. Okay, the final sanding is done, and now I will prep for the primer. To prep these, I wiped all the, the dust off with some paint thinner and taped a bit of the area off to protect it from spray paint. And now it will be spray painted with a primer in order to seal it from the weather. It's not perfect. We'll have to sand over areas like these, but we were gonna have to do that anyway before we prime and paint the rest of the bus. But now's the time for spray foam. Lastly, I don't know if y'all remember the mess this cockpit was before, but he finished it with a beautiful cedar wood. So my spray foam guy flaked on me. Apparently I've seen a couple of y'all complain about that. So maybe that's a that's a, an average thing to happen but yeah my guy kept uh pushing it back one day one day one day one day finally friday he just stopped answering my text messages and phone calls so i showed up at another guy this is harding insulation um uh, drove it out to gate all at his shop so he'll be able to do it over the weekend at his shop look at his his cool truck this nice this nice truck you have a dually, you gotta buy six tires. We got the school bus in here and they already starting to prep it. My check engine light kept coming on the way over here. So every time it did, it lost power. So we're gonna have to, have to check that out when I get home. So it's we need to pick it back up tomorrow or Monday, but we're getting two inches of spray foam all the way around this thing. Be nice and cool. Guess we'll see it at the same time. Y'all have a good one.